Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining me on this session to learn about Amazon EMR Serverless, an exciting new deployment option in preview that we just announced this week. So my name is Radhika Ravirala. I'm the product manager uh, for the EMR service. So before we begin, a quick show of hands. How many of you use EMR on EC2 today? Wow, that's a lot. Awesome. Welcome. And how many of you are EMR on EKS fans? OK. <laughs> Thank you all. So let me begin by talking a little bit about the primary mo motivation for why we built Amazon EMR serverless. As many of you know, Amazon EMR on EC2, with Amazon EMR on EC2, you can launch clusters of any size within minutes. It, behind the scenes, it automatically installs and configures your favorite open source uh, projects. And you have the complete control over how you configure those open source projects for performance as well as cost. So this is a great option for a lot of our customers who want that kind of flexibility. We also have a lot of customers who are looking for a simpler experience. With EMR serverless, you do not have to configure, optimize, operate, or secure clusters to run applications using the open source technologies, such as Apache Spark, Apache Hive, and Presto. You do not have to worry about instant types or instant sizes. You simply can start with an OSS framework of your choice, specify the EMR release, and get started. You also do not have to worry about security and OS patching. You can, uh, as I said, you can just get started by simply naming the project of your choice, for Spark, Hive, or Presto, choose a version that you want to use for your application, and submit your data processing job. EMR serverless automatically determines the resources required to run your job and processes your job. And as the job goes through various stages, it adjusts the resources, uh, required resources for, uh, to complete the job at various stages. With EMR serverless, your jobs will run fast. It includes the performance-optimized EMR runtime for Apache Spark, Hive, and Presto. The EMR runtime, for those of you who are already running EMR on EC2, uh, you, you may already know that uh, the EMR runtime is API compatible with open source and over two times more performant than the open source version that's available out there. And since you only pay for the compute time and resources you use, EMR serverless is cost effective. And lastly, EMR serverless provides a comprehensive set of tools to run your application. And that includes your EMR Studio, which provides notebooks, and familiar open source tools such as Spark UI, Test UI for debugging, uh, to, and also to develop, visualize, uh, and monitor your applications. So let's dive a little deeper into what EMR serverless offers and how it can benefit your uh, data processing workloads. So as we spoke earlier, EMR serverless is simpler to use. And it's simpler because there are fewer decisions to make. You don't have to think about the instant types or cluster sizes. You don't have to configure, optimize, or operate and secure your clusters. You simply have to specify the open source framework and then run with it. You don't have to think about patching for uh, your operating system as well. Doing all this, you still get the benefits that you expect out of Amazon EMR. Because of the open source compatibility, the open source version currency that we have, performance optimized runtime, you do not need to worry about managing clusters anymore. 
So you get the EMR optimized runtime out of the box with EMR serverless. There is no need to guess cluster sizes. EMR serverless provides fine-grained scaling by adding and removing workers at each stage of your workload. You don't have to reconfigure as your data traffic for your processing job changes. And that makes it really easy for you to not think about how to right-size your cluster. And you're doing this by paying only for the resources you use. And not only that, you can control costs by setting a maximum limit on how many workers can be launched. So EMR serverless provides all the benefits of Amazon EMR without having to manage any clusters. You retain the Amazon EMR's performance optimized runtime, the open source currency, and you can run your favorite open source projects such as Apache Spark, Hive, and Presto. The Amazon EMR runtime is API compatible and uh, twice, of, uh, over twice as fast as the standard open source, so your jobs run faster and you incur less compute costs. So here is a, a slide that talks about the EMR runtime for Apache Hive. So for those of you who have been running Spark and Hive on uh, Amazon EMR, uh, you are already aware that the uh, Amazon runtime for Apache Hive is a performance optimized runtime environment for Hive that is available and turned on default. So you don't have to turn any knobs to get this benefit. Amazon EMR has added the performance optimization to Apache Hive version 3.1.2 on EMR release 6.4.0, and our improvements include changes to the default Hive implementation in query planning uh, and query execution. So we ran TPCDS uh, derived benchmark test, and in this test, we have noticed that there is a 1.25 times performance improvement in geo mean for the query execution. Uh, the EMR runtime for Apache Hive is 100 API compatible with the open source Apache Hive, so you can continue writing applications using the open source APIs. Uh, as you can see, each EMR release uh, contains optimized performance improvements over the previous release. So the graph shows the difference in the optimization we see between the last two releases. And so we uh, encourage customers to always uh, stay with the current uh, EMR release so, the, so that you get the benefit of this performance improvements right out of the box. So e, uh, EMR serverless provides fine-grained scaling uh, as a feature. And what that means to you is, uh, for example, your job may require 10 workers for the first 10 minutes of the processing job. And then later, you might require 40 workers for the next 10 minutes. And then for the last stage of your job, you might require just five workers who are, which run for about five minutes. So with fine-grained uh, automatic scaling, you only incur costs for 10 workers for the 10 minutes and the 40 workers for the next 10 minutes and then the five uh, workers for the next five minutes. So behind the scenes, EMR serverless automatically scales up the workers at each stage of the, your processing job and scales them down when they are not required. So you are charged for the aggregate vCPU, the memory, and the storage resources used from the time a worker starts running the job and until it stops, rounded to the nearest uh, second with a one minute minimum. So for example, if your job may require 10 workers for the first 10 minutes of the processing job, 40 minutes, as you can see in the picture, and then the next five minutes, uh, the fine -grained, with fine-grained automatic scaling, you only incur costs for uh, uh, the amount of, uh, uh, the total amount of vCPU memory and storage used during the duration of uh, these 
uh, stages within your data processing job. As a result, you don't have to ever pay for over-provisioned or under-provisioned workers or resources. So resiliency is important to the features we built in. So uh, EMR serverless is resilient to availability zone failures. What this means is uh, EMR serverless is a regional service. So what that, uh, what that means to you is that when you submit jobs to the EMR serverless application, it can run in any AZs uh, uh, within that region. A job is run in a single availability zone to avoid the performance implications of any network failures uh, or network uh, 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 traffic across, uh, net performance implications of network traffic moving between the availability zones. So in order to avoid that, it runs in, your job runs in one availability zone. In case that avail uh, availability zone goes down for any reason or is impaired, uh, behind the scenes, again, EMR serverless app, uh, application is automatically run in a different uh, healthy availability zone. So when using resources in a private VPC, which is common with a lot of our enterprise customers, we recommend that when using EMR serverless, you specify the private VPC configuration for multiple AZs so that EMR serverless can automatically select a healthy availability zone from that list. EMR uh, serverless also enables secure, uh, building secure sc shared application. What that means is you can create a per job IAM role and you specify that job when you submit it to your application. So it simplifies authorization for multiple tenants with per job execution roles. It enables interactive applications. So if you're using notebooks today uh, to run interactive applications, ad hoc queries, EMR serverless supports it fully. What that means is you get fast response times to interactive query use cases, such as uh, SQL queries that are run from your notebook, or if you want to run a Hive or a, uh, a Spark query uh, on your cluster and get a quick response. So for those of you who are using EMR on EC2, you're used to having a cluster uh, with your uh, workers ready to go, and when you submit a, a query, to a Hive or a Spark application, you get the results instantaneously. So to enable that, we have a concept of pre-initialized pool of workers ready to respond within seconds. Because interactive uh, applications allow your data scientist and data engineer to run interactive SQL queries for data exploration, these type of queries require a really fast response to these requests. So to support those kind of interactive applications, EMR serverless allows you to pre-initialize a pool of workers. You can start your EMR serverless application and pre-initialize your pool of workers. And as soon as a user starts the application, um, your, your query starts executing. And when you stop the application, uh, to stop the workers when there are no interactive users are active. So it's a simple matter of starting the application, submitting your job or your query, and stopping the application when you don't have any live users running queries. So if processing user requests requires more workers than what you have initially initialized, let's say you pre-initialized uh, uh, 10 workers and your processing requires 20, EMR serverless automatically adds more workers to, uh, to your job so that you uh, and uh, keeping in mind uh, maximum concurrent limits that you specify. So if you have uh, a job that is processing uh, data for you and you require uh, 20 workers, behind the scenes, EMR serverless provisions them uh, uh, keeping, in, uh, keeping your maximum limit that you specified so that you can control your costs that way. So by controlling the number of workers uh, to the pre-initialized 
uh, and, and, uh, and keeping the maximum concurrent workers, you can optimize your user experience and also keep your costs under control. So for those of you who have been running Amazon uh, EMR on EC2, there are multiple deployment options uh, available, right? EMR uh, on EC2 is one option. And then we introduced uh, uh, EMR on EKS. And then uh, you can also run uh, EMR on Outposts. And then finally, you have Amazon EMR serverless. So you can build your application once and run on any one of these deployment options. So applications built using uh, Amazon EMR runtime can be run in any one of these deployment options. So the same Amazon EMR releases are provided for applications using your EMR clusters. So Amazon EMR on EKS and EMR on serverless as well. So when you build an application using uh, Amazon EMR release, uh, for example, a Spark job using Amazon EMR release 6.4, you can choose to run it on any one of these uh, options. So this allows you to build applications uh, for a given framework version and retain the flexibility to change this deployment model uh, based on your future operational needs. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the core concepts on Amazon uh, EMR serverless. So we'll begin with the concept of an application. So with uh, EMR serverless, you can create one or more application that uses open source analytic frameworks. So for example, to create an application, you specify the open source framework that you want to use, um, Spark or Hive, uh, the Amazon release for that open source framework version. Uh, for example, Amazon release 6.4, which corresponds to Apache Spark 3.1.2 and a name for your application. So those are the three minimal parameters that we require in order to create this application. And then once the application is created, you can uh, start submitting your jobs. So one of the things that you want to remember uh, is when to create different applications. So do you need one application or do you need multiple application? Now to answer that question, uh, the you have to look into what you're trying to build. For example, if you are trying to use different open source frameworks, uh, a Spark application, a Hive application, then you want to build two different applications. If you want to use different versions of the open source framework, uh, for example, you are interested in Spark running Spark 3.1.2 uh, and maybe 2.4.5, then you, you want to consider using different applications uh, for them. If you want to perform A-B testing when upgrading from one version to another, uh, that's another uh, situation where you want to create a different application. If you want to maintain separate logical environments for test and production scenarios or test and dev scenarios, that's when you want to create different applications for these different environments. Uh, and you want to provide logical environments for different teams um, with independent cost controls and usage tracking. All these warrant a different uh, application uh, with uh, Amazon EMR serverless. So next we talk about the concept of job. A job is a request to process your data on applications. So you can run multiple jobs on an application and you can control authorization using job execution role. And what that means is with every job that you submit, you have the ability to specify an IAM role that has specific permissions to run that job. And then we have the concept of workers. Workers are an entity that Amazon EMR serverless internally uses to execute your jobs. A workers run on the OSS framework of your choice, and each worker by default has four CPUs, 30 GB of memory, and 20 GB of local storage. You can change the size or adjust the size of these workers to control performance. 
And finally, you have uh, the notion of uh, pre-initialized workers. This is an interesting feature of Amazon EMR serverless where you can pre-initialize a set of workers. As we just spoke, for interactive applications where you want quick response times, pre-initializing a warm pool of workers to submit your job is a, is a great way to get uh, faster responses. Your jobs, uh, your jobs start immediately, and it helps you uh, maintain a warm pool of uh, workers ready to run your job. This is similar to the experience that you will have when running Amazon EMR on EC2. So the pre-initialized workers will allow you to maintain a warm pool of workers for the application so that it can provide a sub-second response to start processing your requests. So let's dive a little bit deeper into common usage patterns with Amazon EMR serverless. So the pattern number one is with respect to data pipelines. Now, data pipelines are fundamental to your analytic workloads. A common pattern with data, pro uh, with data pipelines is to start a cluster, run a job, and then stop the cluster when the job is complete. Now, because we decouple compute and storage, you have uh, the, uh, the service gives you the ability to uh, run in such a way that such that the inputs and outputs for each job are persi persisted separately away from the cluster. Uh, for example, in Amazon S3, uh, where you, your in inputs and outputs uh, for the job come. Now, these steps are frequently automated using workflows such as managed uh, workflows for Apache Airflow, or step functions, or in, um, for those of you who are still running Uzi jobs, that's, that's another way to run your data pipelines. Now, these steps are frequently automated using uh, these uh, orchestration tools, uh, and, and uh, uh, these steps are, although not very complex, you still have to spend time thinking about what type of instance you want, what should be the cluster size, uh, and so on and so forth. So there are a few more decisions to make, and customers have been doing this uh, while building these uh, workflows. In addition to thinking about the instance sizes and cluster sizes, you also want to uh, find out or determine uh, availability zone where your clusters run to handle failover, and you have to test your application uh, when adopting OS updates. So when the data changes over time, you have to resize the clusters or use features like Amazon EMR managed scaling or auto scaling to size your clusters. So EMR serverless provides a simpler solution for this by simply eliminating the need for you to handle uh, these scenarios. So you simply choose the open source framework eliminating the need for you to uh, think about instance sizes and cluster sizes, and simply uh, create your application and submit jobs. So you don't have to worry about uh, any of the instance selection, cluster startup, cluster resizing, or uh, patching. Here is an example of how uh, the pipelines uh, become very uh, simple to run with Amazon EMR serverless. So here we have a bunch of steps in my pipeline. Step A starts and requires three workers. Uh, you submit the request to Amazon uh, application that you've created. And on the right-hand side is what EMR serverless do, uh, does behind the scenes. So it's, you have uh, three workers that are started and executing your job. And later, at a later stage, like when you're running process B and process C, you will notice that you will need additional workers. This is when Amazon EMR serverless automatically scales when running through stages in your pipeline and adds those additional workers to complete uh, your job. So the fine-grained 
uh, scaling helps you save cost because you are, uh, you are, your, each stage of your job is only using the resources that it needs to finish that stage. And the workers are automatically decommissioned when the pipeline finishes. So the second pattern that we see out there is that of shared clusters. So this is where uh, you have shared clusters uh, the, for, for various teams. And traditionally, on-premises, they have been implemented using the YARN queues. And you, can, you, you have different pipelines, different users submitting jobs, and they are queued up and, and uh, executed uh, by sharing the resources within that cluster. When it comes to sharing clusters with Amazon EMR on EC2, we, we have uh, seen customers leverage the auto-scaling feature as well as the most recent uh, managed scaling. So both these options are available, and uh, the same pattern can be applied to this uh, Amazon EMR on EC2 deployment option uh, very effectively. And now, with the shared applications for Amazon EMR serverless, it's even simpler because you can have a number of pipelines and jobs submitting uh, the jobs to an e e EMR uh, serverless application, and the workers are assigned to each job when required so that your jobs get the resources they need. Moreover, because you only pay for the workers that your jobs require, you don't incur any additional cost for or provisioning your resources. So uh, as we talked about earlier, there is also the concept of per job execution role. And because each job can specify the IAM role that should be used to access the AWS resources when running that job, you don't have to set up complex configuration to manage queues and, and permissions. So as you can see in this example, we have uh, two data engineers submitting jobs, and each of them use a different role with a different set of permissions um, uh, to the same EMR application. And the workers use the execution role for the user uh, in order to run and, and can complete their job. So debugging jobs, uh, jobs is also super simple. Uh, when you submit a job to an EMR serverless application, uh, workers uh, are used to uh, use the, uh, the execution role to execute the job, and then you have this Spark and the test UI uh, for detailed analysis even when the job finishes. That means that the debugging uh, capability that you currently enjoy with Amazon EMR on EKS, uh, Amazon EMR on EC2, is also available with EMR uh, serverless. And the third pattern we see out there is that of interactive applications. So here, uh, we have this pattern come into picture when teams keep a cluster of instances available to support interactive analysis. So in this case, the cluster is set up and initialized with applications, and then it waits for the interactive user requests. Uh, the applications are pre-initialized so that they can immediately start processing user requests and provide the interactive uh, uh, response uh, as, as soon as the job uh, finishes. So EMR serverless enables this scenario without requiring you to manage clusters. You can specify the number of workers that you want to pre-initialize the workers. And uh, if you see in this picture, we have created an EMR application with an initial capacity of 10. That means that 10 workers are pre-initialized and in a stopped state when you first create it. As soon as you submit a job uh, or you start the application, the workers are ready to receive your uh, jobs and start executing them. Now, let's say in this scenario, we have a job A submitted by a user, and job A requires about three workers. So we have three, the job running on three workers, and next time when you submit another job to the same application, let's say, let's call it job B, and that requires uh, seven workers, the pre-initialized capacity is used first 
to complete the second job. And when more jobs are submitted to the same EMR application, they also start immediately as long as the pre-initialized workers are available to take the request. And if you run out of the pre-initialized workers, more workers are provisioned uh, and, uh, uh, so that your uh, jobs keep uh, running. So the pre-initialized capacity is maintained even after all the jobs complete. That means these, uh, when the job finishes, the application access workers are decommissioned, but the pre-initialized uh, pool is still waiting to uh, get the next set of jobs. And when you stop the application, uh, the workers are decommissioned. So the, uh, stopping an application uh, automatically decommissions the capacity. So all workers are stopped uh, when the application is stopped. So let's dive a little bit deeper into how the pricing works. So pricing has a few dimensions. They include the total aggregated vCPU, total memory, and total disk storage across all the workers. And the pricing is measured by the runtime of workers with a one minute minimum. One other thing I want to uh, talk about here is that with EMR serverless, you can create an application using an open source framework version and submit jobs to that uh, application. As part of this job specification, you can provide the minimum and maximum number of concurrent workers uh, and the vCPU memory and the storage for each of these workers. So EMR automatically adds and removes the workers based on the, uh, what the job requires within those specified limits. So it doesn't exceed uh, the limits that you specified. So this gives you kind of a control over uh, not exceeding uh, the resources uh, for your team, for example. So the three dimensions uh, of compute, memory, and storage for workers can be independently configured. And this is uh, something that you can choose from um, between one CPU, two CPU, or four CPU per worker. Uh, and from 2 GB to 30 GB per worker for memory, and you have by default 20 GB of local storage uh, that is available on all workers. And you can configure additional storage if you think uh, you need more on each, uh, each of these workers. So you are charged for this vCPU, memory, and storage resources uh, from the time the workers start executing till the time they terminate. Uh, and it's rounded to the nearest second with a one minute minimum. So if you set up your application to start workers at application startup, the requested workers will start and your application, um, uh, to start your application and then terminate, uh, when you terminate, uh, when you stop the application or when the application remains idle in all these uh, scenarios, uh, you do not incur the charge. So here is an example of how the pricing may work. Um, in, this, in this example, we have three stages, and we have 10 workers for the first 10 minutes. And uh, the way pricing works is we aggregate compute, memory, and disk across these 10 workers for 10 minutes. And in stage two, we have 40 workers for 10 minutes, and we aggregate compute, memory, and disk across 40 workers for the next 10 minutes. And then uh, for the last stage, we repeat the same process, and, and, and then we aggregate the entire price uh, to give you uh, uh, the, the cost of running that job. All right, so that brings us to the demo section. So uh, before I play the demo video, I thought I'll do a live demo for... Uh, starting with high first, and then we'll switch over to All right, is everybody able to see my screen okay? Awesome, okay. So in this demo, I'll, I'll show you how to create an application, and, uh, and then we'll submit 
a, a Hive job, and then we'll switch over to the video so you can see a more elaborate demo for Spark. So the demo I'm doing right now is for Hive. So as you can see, the uh, commands, I'm, I'm running the AWS CLI commands to create a Hive application. And my uh, Hive application is called serverless Hive demo. And I've specified the release label as 5.33. And as soon as I create an application, I get a response with an application ID. Now, once I get an application ID, I am going to start uh, exporting the application ID as a, this is just for convenience so that And then let's get the application ID. All right, so as you can see, my application has been created, and I have some uh, initial uh, uh, configuration data available here. So it shows me uh, the initial capacity of uh, the application I've created with the resource configuration for the CPU, disk, and memory. And uh, I, I have a default worker card. Because I didn't, when, I'm create, when I created the Hive application, I didn't specify an initial capacity. So this is the default uh, initial capacity that it started with. So I have three worker count here um, uh, automatically created. And as you can see, uh, the application state is in, um, in a created stage which means we can move to the next step here, where I will go ahead and start the application. So starting the application is, again, uh, uh, using a simple start application API call, starting the application ID with the, uh, with the application ID that I got uh, from the previous step. And as you can see, the application transitioned from a starting state to a created state. Now that I have uh, my application ready to go, I'm going to submit a job to it. So what I'm doing here is I have my Hive query in, located in an S3 bucket. As you can see, it's called hivequery.q. And I'm sending it some um, Hive config parameters, uh, which includes the Scratch directory, the Metastore warehouse directory, as well as the configuration overrides for my Hive site. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is, uh, gives you the flexibility to send in your application-specific uh, configuration uh, when you start the job. And as you can see, I also have a monitoring configuration here where I'm specifying uh, the log uh, location for my, where my log should go. And uh, this, in, in this case, it's an S3 uh, bucket. So that's where I'm sending my logs. OK, so I'm still, I still need to wait for my application to get started once it's uh, started. So it's I'll wait for, I'll give it another few seconds. And then start it again. All right, so my application started, and uh, my job got submitted to this application. And as, I, as you can see, I got a job run ID. 
Now I can take this job run ID and uh, it, it takes a couple of minutes for this job to run. So in the interest of time, I'll switch over and show you a demo. But what happens here is once the job is completed, I can, I, we, the, we have API calls so that you can um, look at the status of the application and also um, have a look at uh, the UI for Hive and Tez uh, in order to, uh, to do any kind of debugging. So let me also give you a preview of uh, how EMR Serverlex uh, works for a Spark application. And for that, I have uh, a demo video uh, created by my colleague, Damon Cartesi. And let's watch this video. Hi, I'm Damon Cortese, a principal developer advocate for analytics on the EMR team at AWS. And today, I'm here to show you how to get started with Amazon EMR Serverless. EMR Serverless is a new deployment option for Amazon EMR, now available in preview, that allows you to easily run applications with open source frameworks like Apache Spark, Hive, Presto, without having to manage or operate clusters. It's simple to use, fast, and it saves costs by paying only for the compute time and resources that you use. In this demo, I'll show you a couple things. First, how easy it is to get started running a simple PySpark application using EMR serverless APIs. You just provide your code and EMR serverless will dynamically scale at each stage of your data application. I'll also show you how to spin up a Spark history server so you can easily debug your job. Let's get started. First, let's go ahead and create a new Spark application on EMR serverless with EMR 6.5. For use cases where applications require a sub-second response time, such as interactive data analysis, you can pre-initialize required resources during application creation. But for now, we'll just use the default settings. I've done a little bit of prep work ahead of time, like creating an IAM role for my job and uploading this simple PySpark script to S3. In this script, we're reading some weather data from the NOAA Global Surface Summary of Day dataset from the Registry of Open Data on AWS and doing a simple count of the records in the year 2020. For the preview, you need to go ahead and start the application you just created. EMR Serverless will have auto start and auto stop functionality that allows you to use the resources you need just for the duration of your job. Now that our application is ready, let's go ahead and submit our job. You just provide your application ID, PySpark, PySpark script on S3 is the entry point, and you can also configure an S3 location for your logs that will be populated while the job is running. And that's it. Now your job is submitted. We can use the get job run command to see the status of the job while it's running. And your application automatically provisions, configures, and scales workers to run your job, even as more workloads are submitted. Let's take a quick look at how we can debug the job while it's running. During the preview, you can use a Spark History Server Docker image that uses the logs on S3 to monitor the job. If we look on S3, the logs are in the application folder here, and we can see a Spark logs prefix with a Spark event log data that is continuously updated. This is what we'll use to power our Spark history server. As you can see here, we can go into the Spark history server and look at incomplete jobs. Here's our job right here. And if we click through, we can see that our job is already listing leaf files and directories for about 12,000 files in that NOAA bucket. Here, you can see only the driver is currently running, but more executors are going to spin up as the job gets going. Now, we've got 20 tasks running. And if we click over to the executors tab, we can see that even more are spinning up while the job is running. On the executors tab over here, you can see all the different executors and the number of tasks they've completed and the memory they're using. Looks like our job is finished now. And if we go ahead and get job run, we can see that the state is now success. Let's go ahead and take a look at the logs that are written out to S3 once the job is finished. If we take a look at the log URI that we provided for the creation of the job, we can see that we have both Spark driver and Spark executor logs in addition to the event logs that we saw earlier. Inside of the Spark driver prefix, we'll see both a standard error and a standard out log. Let's take a look at the standard outlog and see how many weather records there were in 2020. In this case, we're just copying the file down locally and unzipping it. And there we can see the amount of weather readings in 2020 was just over 4 million. So there you have it. That is how to get started with PySpark on EMR Serverless.
So that's it. We built EMR Serverless to make it simple to use for data engineers, data scientists, data analysts, or really anybody that wants to run big data applications without having to worry about managing clusters. There's no servers to manage. You get the latest open source frameworks within about 60 days of release, and you get the EMR performance runtime as well. You can use EMR Serverless for auto-scaling multi-tenant clusters for teams, scheduled data pipelines, or interactive workloads like notebooks, SQL editors, SageMaker Studio, and of course, EMR Studio. Give it a try and reach out if you have any questions or feedback. Thanks. Thank you, Damon. So here is what is available in preview. You have the ability to run a Spark and Hive jobs using CLI, API, and the SDK. You have the ability to pre-provision workers for jobs that to start immediately. And then uh, upcoming in preview are console support as well as the EMR Studio support. So here are some uh, resources to learn more. We have a serverless blog, uh, a preview sign up, as well as the documentation for Amazon EMR serverless. So we hope that uh, you'll give Amazon EMR serverless a try and uh, share your feedback with us. Thank you. <laughs>